Well, good morning. It's Gordon Hickson and I have a real privilege today. Rachel's asked me to share on one of my areas of real passion, which is awakening the leader within you. In my terminology, I call it activating the heavenly virus of kingdom leadership within you. And so we're going to go on that journey today. But the bottom line for me is that I really, really do believe, because I'm a pastor, I really believe that there is a leader within you. I believe that every one of us is created for leadership. Whatever sphere you're in, whether it's family, whether it's education, whether it's in church, whether it's in commerce, whether it's in government, military, there's something within you which I believe God has fashioned to train and equip and to bless other people. And so that's where we're going. But last September, strangely, I sat down, I had time on my hands, I sat down and I began to write a book on viral leadership, which I called the heavenly virus. <laughs> so I was a bit surprised when the COVID virus hit the world. And I was a bit confused, but on Pentecost morning, May the 31st, I woke up with such a start and I felt God say, get up and start writing a poem. And so this is the poem that I wrote. And I believe God just gave this poem to me. And this encapsulates so much of what I'm going to be sharing today and over this week. It's called The Heavenly Virus, God's Response to Coronavirus. In 2020, COVID virus hit the nations of the world. But strangely, this was also when God's global plan unfurled, raising leaders in the church who saw with perfect vision to impart faith and hope and reconcile division. These were the days of lockdown which stopped us in our tracks, when our old wineskins failed, revealing all the cracks. We saw so clearly then that it's not by might or power, but by God's Holy Spirit who is needed in this hour. As in those days of old there in Jerusalem, with those disciples locked down in that upper room, it seemed to all the world that day that Rome had clearly won, but little did they know right then that God had just begun. As those nails pierced his hands and that spear pierced his side, the world grew grave and dark. Every hope and dream just died. There on that cross at Calvary, the devil's fury was outpoured, but God reached down and seized that cross, and it became his sword. There it was that God himself made a spectacle and stripped the devil of his power and saw all his demons whipped. That moment could have easily brought a global-wide disaster. But this is where our Lord became our King and Sovereign Master. So today, when it just seems this virus might have won, we all now need to come to faith that our God has just begun. Old ways, traditions, wineskins, all of these have stopped. And God has pruned his church and all religion has been cropped. Now it is our God's turn to send his heavenly virus, a global wide awakening a revival flow amongst us. Gone are all the man-made hierarchies and structures, things that made us sterile with fear, control and ruptures. This is the day we need to seize. God's church must be a movement. Every believer now empowered to know where heaven sent. Discipled by servant leaders who know how to equip an army of believers, each one held in his grip. Like those lepers in lockdown back in Elisha's day, we all will soon discover that the enemy must pay. Every crippling constriction, every limit now has gone. Our enemies have fled away in terror and abandon. Now we're walking out to a totally new landscape. Millions once captive are seeking all ways to escape. 
These months of this cruel virus show the people they can't cope. Now they're yearning deep inside for our messages of hope. God has shaken, and he's shaken. Just his realm now remains. Gone are the excuses, the deceptions, and the games. People are just crying for relationship and touch. God signaled to us all who've been given so, so much. So come on, all you leaders, let's arise and let us shine. Let's make God's love go viral. Come on, now it's our time. Let's rise up with his weapons of unity and prayer. Let's demonstrate with grace to all that we care, and yes, we dare. So that's the poem that God just gave me. Like it was burning in me. I just thought, come on, let's make God's love go viral. You heard Rachel sharing last week about being compelled by love. And this is what it's all about. And if I get passionate day, today, forgive me, because this is one of my passions, of awakening that leader that I know, that viral leadership that I know that is within you, that needs to be activated. Every believer being activated awakening the leader in each one of us. And I remember Reinhard Bonke talking about simply us being New Testament believers, New Testament priests, carrying that precious blood of Jesus to every person, every community, carrying that precious love to every person we met. Now you heard in the poem my reference to the four lepers coming out of lockdown. Remember in 2 Kings chapter 7? And it's going to be a totally new landscape. They weren't expecting everybody to have fled, but something had changed. You see, when we come out of lockdown, as we are now coming out of lockdown, people, you need to recognise, have been tenderised. They've been become desperate by losing finance, losing relationships, losing loved ones, just losing their peace, being gripped by fear. We need to realise that people are desperate. They're ready for something. This is what I wrote in the poem. This is the day we need to seize. God's church must be a movement. It's got to be that movement. Every believer, that's every believer, that's you and me. Every believer now empowered to know we are heaven sent. Disciples by servant leaders who know how to equip an army of believers, each one held in its grip. Now this is the army of ordinary believers we've heard about, we've heard prophesied. It's an army of ordinary believers, just like that's you, that's me, that's awakening that leader within you. This is a time for all hands being on deck, each one reaching one and then teaching another one to reach one. It's that viral multiplication time of making God's love go viral. Now one of the strangest things that Jesus said in Luke 12, 49, is this. He said, I have come to bring fire on the earth. And oh, how I wish it was already kindled. What did he mean by that? He wanted to bring something so viral, so like wildfire that it could spread rapidly. And he was longing for that viral movement of God's spirit. But he didn't just look down remotely from heaven. He came amongst us. Listen, this is the message today. He came amongst us. He came within us. He came alongside us to literally to infect us with that heavenly virus, that burning fire of the Holy Spirit. He ignited each one of us. And people are desperate, waiting for each one of us just to come into their world. I believe that's the heart of John 3.16. God so loved the world that he didn't just send a whole legion of angels to take out the devil and rescue us. God loved the world so much that he came himself. He came in all of that fragility. He gave his only son. That is the message. That is true leadership. Literally to come into our mess, bringing that message of hope. Now, 30 years ago, uh, when I was with Rainer Bonke, I had to go to Argentina, and I saw the extraordinary explosive revival across Argentina. But when I came back and I was pastoring in England, 
there was a, an Argentinian pastor who decided to bring the revival that had been in Argentina, bring it across to the UK. He was remarkable. I mean, he was like a whirlwind, going everywhere. And he was literally, one of the things he preached about was that all of us pastors should join him in a 40-day prayer and fasting time to bring heaven down. Come on, rend the heavens and come down. I tell you, in my area around Watford, we were a lot of very skinny pastors. But something happened. The Spirit of God moved powerfully during those days. But sadly, this man had an 11-year-old son. And his son, while his father was running everywhere, his son had lost his culture. He left Argentina, lost his friends. He'd come to a nation he didn't know. Literally, he was out of water. He's out of his depth. He just disappeared into complete East subculture. He just began to find his enjoyment in the, you know, the American football. That was late night satellite TV. And also he began to connect to some of the youth music. He just was cruising in a different world to his dad. Now, my friend, this Argentinian, just laid down the law. He just began to put in strict laws about what his son could, and could not do and could do. And what he was doing was modeling Old Testament leadership. But it didn't work. It was so remote, it was so harsh. And eventually he began to complain to God and say, God, I'm bringing your, doing your message, but what are you, you're not caring for my son. And God just tenderly said to him, you're not fathering him like I fathered you. When you were in a total mess, I came into your world. I came in all of your poo and all your mess and all the struggles. I came alongside you. I lifted you out of that. and I empowered you. I connected with you. And then I lifted you into this viral thing of leadership in, in revival. He said, I want, God said to him, I want you to give up all of your running around. For a period of months, I want you to immerse yourself in your son's world and see what I, I do. Well, next day, in fact, it was the next evening, his son got up late at night and it was switched on the, the satellite TV. He was watching this American football. Suddenly, there was his dad sitting alongside him. He was really suspicious. He just kept on thinking, what is my dad on? What's he playing at? And... Uh, his dad just began to learn the names of the teams and began to, to start doing some banter with him. And then he began to start listening to some of the, the youth music and began to learn some of those pop groups. And slowly he began to talk his son's language and entered his world. Now, it didn't happen overnight. It was probably about three months' journey. But suddenly after three months, one night, he was sitting there with his son. And suddenly he saw that look. He, said, he saw his son look at him. And he saw that look go across his son's face. I've got a dad. Something broke inside him. Something broke inside his son. They just wept on each other's shoulders. That was the moment of connection. And you see, that is what God did do with me. That's what God does with you. He comes into your mess, my mess. He comes as a father to love us, to lift us. It's so tender. But you know, we need to recognize that it doesn't just always happen like that. You know, he, he, he just found that that bonding happened to his son. But what was on him, that passion for revival, literally was precipitated onto his son. His son began to bring all of his friends together, non-Christian friends, and began to t tell them about the incredible revival back in his country of Argentina. And he began a youth group which began to see the power of God. My friend, when he told me this story, was laughing. He said, last week my son sat me down and he pointed his finger at me. And he said, Dad, what are you doing for the kingdom? My group are fasting three days a week. <laughs> now that is fathering. You see, that is leadership. It's literally coming into their world, coming alongside. Now come on, let's get in amongst the broken. Let's get in amongst the hurting, the damaged, the marginalized, the confused. The people who in lockdown have just really lost hope. I feel personally really privileged to be working alongside an organization called Battelle. Battelle UK, who reach out to the most broken, most marginalized, drug addicts, alcoholics, homeless. And I watch how these ones are transformed. The leader is awakened inside each one of them. I see outstanding leaders coming out of Battelle as they begin to start. And th their slogan is restoring broken lives, releasing destiny. 
Now that's what we've got to see, looking out into the community, restore those broken lives and release the destiny. But it's messy, it takes time, and it also takes your sacrifice. There's a great proverb, it comes in Proverbs 14 verse 4. This is the Passion Version. It said, the only clean stable is an empty stable. So if you really want to enjoy an abundant harvest and the work of an ox, then you better get ready for a mess or two. In other words, if you want to see a harvest of souls and of people's lives change, just get used to a bit of poo. You know, life's like that. It's messy. Leaders get their hands dirty. They come into the mess. Jesus came into the mess. And you see, harvest is messy. People are broken, damaged. They might lash out at you as you try and touch them. You know, some parents, some leaders try and emphasize the Old Testament model. They're being very, very strict, structural, very, very rigid and laying down the law. That's very remote leadership. We mustn't just lay down the law. We've got to lay down our lives. Two different styles of leadership. And Jesus' culture, that's what he does. He comes into our mess alongside us and he lays down his life for us. So for me, the pivotal key to leadership is this, that we catch, you and I, we catch leadership values and leadership culture from those people that we bond with. I'll say it again. We catch leadership values and culture from the people that we bond with. So basically, we've got to look for a leader to follow, somebody we really, really admire. And if you're already tracking in leadership, then look to give yourself far more to the people who are following you. You see, leadership is both caught and as well as being taught. It's caught and taught. But it, largely, we catch it from somebody and then we begin to follow their teaching and begin to grow from them. But the bottom line for me is this thing of no bond, no transfer. And that is the covenantal law, the law of covenant. When we make covenant with each other, all that I have I give to you. There's that strange mystery that happens when we bond, that all that I have is passed on to you. That's the mystery of marriage. It's literally, there's a transfer. It's the covenantal transfer. And Jesus modeled this for us in the upper room. You see this model in Luke 22, when Jesus gathered his disciples together and he broke bread with them. He made a covenant. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Basically, all that I am, I'm giving to you. They had no idea that he was transferring something. All that he had, his power, his authority, his kingdom, he was giving to them. And then in verse 29, he says this extraordinary thing. He says, I have now transferred unto you the kingdom. Literally, all the, his power and authority of the kingdom, he had given to them. And we need to realize that that is the Jesus culture. That is the heavenly virus. That is what is transferred when we bond with people. Now, for me, my journey started with Rachel's dad. Rachel's dad was my pastor. He was absolutely outstanding as a revivalist across India. He led revival movements across Bombay, Mumbai, and then down in Andhra Pradesh. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people swept into the kingdom. But his passion was the kingdom of God. That is where I got his passion for the kingdom of God. And I just literally used to eat and eat and eat his teaching. I listened to every tape, every message. Literally, all that I am today is a reflection of what I picked up from Rachel's dad. But then there was also Ranad Bonki. Now, I was his campaign director, his international campaign director, and I just had an impartation of a gift of boldness and of faith. I remember when he, he told me to start uh, being a leader for him. He just said, ah, oh, this is easy. Just do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Now go to Malawi. And you see, it was that simple thing, that boldness and that faith to hear God and do something. That was an impartation. Yes, his passion for souls, but largely it was his gift of faith that God imparted to me. And then working with Brother Yun when, when I led the Back to Jerusalem movement. I mean, I have never met somebody so humble, so passionate, so life laid down. I mean, in his 
in, in our highest pinnacle of the kingdom, it's laying our lives down. For him, you don't even ent enter his kingdom until you're willing to lay your life down. Literally, it was from the beginning a life laid down to see people saved. And then I guess I should mention Brian and Bobby Houston because I'm part of Hillsong Church right now. I mean, I've watched the impartation as they have gone alongside leaders and begun to encourage people. It's just been so exciting and thrilling. I remember once when we were in Sydney, Rachel was talking to Brian and suddenly in the middle of talking, he stopped and said, sorry, I've just got to do something. And he grabbed one of his leaders and said, hey, go and find out the mobile number of that kid over there. I've just seen him picking up some litter in the building. And there he was. He texts this young kid of 14. Hey, this is, this is your pastor, Brian. I saw you today running around picking up litter. I am so proud of you. With kids like you in the church, we're going places. Good on you, mate. Well done. Now, that kid must have been on cloud nine for months. The pastor, Brian, sent me a text. You see, that is leadership. Coming in amongst them, noticing people, encouraging them. Just, it's one-on-one. -on -one. That is true leadership. Now, Jesus' final words were all about this strange thing of kindling this viral fire in his followers. He didn't call it the viral fire. He actually called it the glory. And in John 17, 22, he says, Father, I've done it. I've given them the same glory, the same revival fire that you put on me. I've done it. What he was saying is, I've infected them with what was on me, this heavenly virus. Remember John 12, 27 says, it's for this very cause that I came. Literally just to infect and to bring this fire on earth. But remember, if there's no point of connection, or if there's no bond, then there's no transfer of this fire. Because bottom line, remember, the relational connection is the key to that transfer. Relational connection is so important in awakening that leader with you. Now this is the miracle of that divine connection with his love. Let me tell you a story. Many years ago, I was deeply moved by the Miracle of Love video. It was, it was about autism. It was created by Sun, Sunrise Ministries in the States, uh, created by a Christian couple. But they were a top level, top executives in a, in a company, fell in love, got married, they had a child, but their child sadly was totally locked in autism, could not relate to them at all. Every day their child would just rock, shake his hands, would just be in his, in his world like this, day after day after day. And being Christians, they had no idea what to do. Suddenly God spoke to them and just said, let go of everything you're doing get into his world. They both resigned their, their, their executive posts. The next day, there they were, in that playroom with their son, just rocking with him, just rocking, speaking tenderly to him, just rocking, just shaking with him, literally mimicking everything he did. They entered his world. Now, it didn't happen overnight. It was several weeks before suddenly there was connection. They realized they were connecting right into their son's world. And they began to draw him, teach him, teach him how to speak, to, and began to draw him into their world. Tragically, after several months, they woke up one morning, and there he was in the playroom, totally locked again, totally back. It's what we would call in the Christian world being backslidden. <laughs> but they didn't just reject him. They went straight back into his world, started rocking with him again, started eyeballing him, started speaking tenderly. And to their amazement, it didn't take so long this time, but he, they connected with him. And bit by bit, they began to draw him out, teach him, train him. He became completely functional, completely social, outside of his little shell world. And remarkably, he went to school, normal school, began being really good at football. The video ends with him in a football team, just laughing and joking with his friends, and the football is kicked off the field. It goes under the, the bench where there's a nun with an autistic child that's just rocking. And he runs over to get the ball. But he looks at this child and something within him, he recognises himself and begins to relate to that child. And the nun just shouts at him and says, Shoo, get away. You don't understand this. This child's locked in his own world. Go away. You see, she didn't understand. 
incredible story, the miracle of God's love. God entering our world, shaking with us. Incredible. Now, I'm going to, I want you to join with me as this day, this week, we explore all sorts, sorts of leadership. Uh, lots of different aspects of this kingdom leadership. But I just want, in the next five minutes, just to excite you with some of the biblical references to this contagious leadership. Because from Genesis, we see this contagious, powerful uh, kingdom. We see it in the Garden of Eden, that picture of the kingdom, with those four rivers that burst out of it. Pishon, Gihon, Cush, Euphrates. They mean something powerful. They mean increase, bursting forth, rapid fruitfulness that encapsulates the power of this viral kingdom it's going to increase it's going to burst forth it's going to bear rapid viral fruitfulness that is the kingdom then we see it again in daniel in that picture of the multi kingdoms but then the kingdom of god comes and it crushes everything and it breaks everything about and subdues it and just builds it uh, together then you get jesus in the new testament talking about the yeast or the leaven which permeates everything and then he talks about this wild, uncontrollable fire. You see, this is a kingdom virus. Remember, kingdom is upside down. It's not the way the world does it. But in the normal world, the virus dies when the host dies. In the kingdom, it's the opposite. When we do the Galatians 2.20 moment of I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, that's the moment something in us dies on the cross. Suddenly that viral kingdom, heavenly virus, begins to come into our world. We become so empowered by it. You see, I remember that from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul tried to explain to the disciples, listen, this is why we are daily given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that life will flow out from us. And I saw that powerful life being powerfully manifested as I worked with, with, uh, with Brother Yun. Just carrying that revival fire. You see it in Paul as he walks into Ephesus. That incredible one man with a kingdom, with the heavenly virus, and the whole city is taken. Now, come on. You and I can do this. I want to pray for you today as we step into this extraordinary moment when we are stepping out of lockdown into this extraordinary moment of harvest. This could be one of our greatest days. Come on, let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for my friend. Lord, with all my passion, I pray right now the Spirit of God would come right there in that room. I pray that they would tangibly sense that the presence of God has come into their space, come into where they are, right alongside them, even into their mess, if there is a mess there, but suffering with them, being with them. And I pray that they would sense that the Holy Spirit injects hope and courage and faith into them. I pray, Lord, that they would feel the awakening of that heavenly virus, that active passion to reach out and touch other people and bring hope to other people. So, Father, I pray you'd seal this moment by your Spirit. I pray that you would just bring that blessing upon each one. They would feel the hand of God, the hand of the shepherd, taking hold of their hand, saying, I'm going to restore you. I'm going to bring you through. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, God bless you.